Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our keynote, keynote speaker, Senator Richard Gordon. Please sit down. Thank you very much, Argel, for your very kind introduction. Please uh, give our president a very big hand. Not only lovely, but certainly very professional and can communicate very well. Let me greet, apart from Argel, or Rajel, let me greet also your Vice President, Gab Nai. Uh, and of course, uh, let me greet also our Secretary, uh, Penelope Tugbong. Tugbong, Tugbong? Tug Tugbang, Tugbang, all right. And of course, our Latin Treasurer, si Eugene Camelio. Let me also greet our distinguished uh, leaders of the Board of Nursing. Uh, sila, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Glenda Arquiza, who I met previously, and of course, uh, Gloria Arcos. At, uh, I also would like to make mention of the fact that uh, in order to honor the past, uh, your founder uh, son is here, Alberto Arabit. I was told to mention him properly. Let me just uh, greet also all the board of directors as well as all the uh, all the different chapters here present from uh, 22 chapters, if I'm not mistaken, throughout the entire archipelago. And I'm very, very happy you could all be here uh, to not only to see one another, but also to enhance your skills because this is a scientific conference, I'm told. So it is not just uh, networking, but certainly it is our uh, opportunity to be able to share our experiences and our uh, hone our goals here. Let me just ask the waiters here to please keep quiet. Timing lang kayo just sa please, ha? I'm delivering an extemporaneous speech and I, I'm not reading from anything, so I, I'm really troubled when may ingay. Do not talk while I'm interrupting. <laughs> My fellow citizens, distinguished nurses, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. What a great pleasure and honor to be here. When I was invited here, I said, I will go. Of course, I'll pack it on Saturday. But of course, uh, if you know me, I studied law and I've always looked at nurses as some of the prettiest, the cleanest, and the most professional. Because uh, when I was in UP College of Law, the College of Nursing was below our building. And so, uh, palagi kami nag-o-ogo, nag nag gox sa mga magandang nurses doon. And of course, they always voted for me in the student council elections. Also, when I was mayor of Olongapo, the nurses played a big role in my job as mayor of Olongapo. We put up a hospital, and certainly nurses were part of making sure that we made, did a makeover. One my favorite story was our hospital in Olongapo really it was very disheveled. They called it a uh, Matadero, but uh, we managed to volunteerism, modernize it by contributions from everyone who contributed everything from air conditioners to laboratory equipment to beds and everything. And we got young doctors uh, to come in and run the hospital. But my favorite story is always, kung gusto niyo magalit si Senator Gordon, every Monday there is a flag ceremony pag magalit ako tao nila, aim high, because my motto is aim high o longo po. Ang aim high sa kanila, taas ba ang blood pressure ni boss? Galit ba? <laughs> but uh, if you really want me to be upset, when I go to the hospital, I always really do a, a white glove infect, inspection. You know, I want to be sure that our people are happy in the hospital pa nakakita ang kabo na nagagalit ako. 
Sa kaso hospital ko sila sabi ko bawal mamatay ang pasyente. Pag namatay ay eh, talagang gusto din ng umalis hindi dahil gusto namin siyang mamatay. And one day I was going around there and I saw my leader, uh, one of my leaders, his name is Mr. Basa. I think some of you have heard this story because I always tell this story for the nurses. Ang sabi ko, listen, uh, Mr. Basa, but kay naan diyan. Sabi niya, ay nako na. Mamamatay na ako, babayaan mo na ako. Sabi niya ka Sabi ko, bawal mamatay, Mr. Basa. Ay, pagod na ako. Sabi niya ka So, tinawa ko yung head ng hospital and I told him, can you get me the, the prettiest nurses? Uh, the prettiest nurses. Pinamili ako ng Miss Olongo po nurse dun sa, uh, right there and there. And then I said, uh, uh, wag pa bango ka nga ng konti, mag makeup ka ng to, konti, wag slipstick ka. At kailangan pag lumapit ka sa pasyente, talagang magigising yung pasyente. At uh, lapitan mo yung matanda na yan at sabihin mo, pinapunta kita ron. At uh, sabihin mo, aalagaan mo siyang mabuti. Uh, at saka medyo taas mo ng konti yung skirt para makita yung knees. Or, <laughs> at saka talagang malambing ka. So nilapitan niya si Mr. Basa. Nakapikit si Mr. Basa. Nung nilapitan niya, Mr. Basa, sa so, yun. Unti-unti mo mo ka sa mata. Nung makita yung mabango at maganda at nakalipstick pa, biglang nagula. Ayan. Wala pa ang tatlong araw pagbalik ko, matigas na si Mr. Basa. Nakatayo na si Mr. Basa. Sabi ko, ano nangyari sa'yo? Kala ko, mamatay ka na. Eh, lintik naman yan, nares mo, napakaganda, napakaseksi. Nung makita ko, talagang gagaling ako. Hindi po, di ako hindi gagaling. So, little bit, uh, of, uh, that's an actual story, and everybody knows that in the long ago. But I can tell you this. Ang sabi ko palagi sa tao, make your presence felt positively. Nurses interact with patients all the time, especially the operating room nurse, takot ang mga pasyente, takot yung pamilya. Always make sure that they are com they're confident and particularly uh, delighted with your professional and special skills because you are going to take care of them. And because of that, uh, I always, uh, wherever I go, sinasabi ko, make your presence felt positively at all times. Never forget that. Uh, to make our presence felt positively at all times. And so today, I came here really to honor the nurses of our country. All the nurses, not just the operating room nurse. That's why I said it's a great honor to be here. Iba salita lang yun. Ako totoo yun. Pag tumangap ako ng speech, it's because I want to honor all of you because sinabi nga ni Florence Nightingale na in this world, sabi niya ganun, I am of certain conviction that the greatest heroes are those who do their duty in the daily grind of domestic affairs whilst the world whirls as a maddening dry dog. Ibig sabihin, nakakagulo ang buong mundo, pero yung mga tao talaga ang hero ay hindi yung uh, nanunood lamang, hindi mga idiots, pero yung mga tao na talagang uh, nagpapa, nagsisilbi for, from their fellow men. And that is why I enjoy being in the Red Cross. And one of the reasons why I came here also is not only to tell you nice things, but you know, I'm always uh, on a heuristic notion to make sure that uh, we maintain our professional capability. And to my mind, uh, let me just put it this way. Ang nurse talagang mali ang strategy ng ating gobyerno sa mga nurses. And I would like you to take that. <laughs> Why is that? It takes a nurse anything from 200,000 to 500,000 before he can finish or she can finish the course. Uh, one dean of MCU said it takes about 500,000. Yung tuition lang ang binidang natin sa 200,000. Pero yung gasto sa dorm, yung mga libro, yung mga ganyan, pabalik-balik sa probinsya, certainly sabi ko nga, pinagbili na yung kalabaw. Tapos pag-review pa, gagastos pa tayo uli. Kumisa nung araw, nung ininvestiga ko yan, Maraming review courses, maraming pumapasa dito sa review courses, they're dedicated. I have always been of the opinion na dapat kung bulok ang nursing school, isaraya. Kung magaling ang nursing school, makikita yan kung ang kanilang review ay doon mismo sa kanilang koleyo at hindi sa iba. 
hindi dun sa professional nagpapalagin. Ang hinahabol ng iba ay katawag na tips. At ako ang tingin ko kung magaling at may pride yung eskwela nyo, they will make it an effort from day one to accept the right nurses with the right uh, vocational pursuits para sa ganon, nakatutok sila, interesting sila, interestado sila at tuloy-tuloy ang pag-aaral. Pag-graduate, doon mag-review at doon makikita kung talagang magaling yung pinag-agasusan at pinag ng panahon ng ating mga parents at saka ng mga nurses. Paglabas nyo dyan, papasa kayo. Puro pangako ang gobyerno pang 1991, if I'm not mistaken. There was a, uh, an executive order that was issued at sinabi dyan, na ang magiging sweldo ng nurse ay SG-15. Pero hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nangyayari yan. In fact, many of our nurses, they work for reservation wages. They work, like in the past, kami mga abogado, para lang makakakuha ng magaling na pwesto. Magbabayad pa kami, magdadala pa kami ng lamesa. Hindi ko inabot yon, Inabot ng matatanda na abogado ng araw yan. To join, uh, nag-abogado di company, the law office, magdadala ka ng labesa mo, at ikaw pa, magdadala ka ng kliyente, at kung di ka makapagdala, tatanggalin ka. Ngayon sa mga nurses, dahil uh, ang mga nurses gustong makakuha ng pagkakataon makapunta abroad, ay eh gusto nila mapunta sa mga malalaking ospital na magaganda para sa ganoon, pag natanggap sila, made sila sa London, made sila sa iba't ibang lugar. Tama ba yan? Kaya mababa ang binibigay na sweldo kung magkamisan. And the, sometimes the average is anything from what I hear, 9,000 to 13,000. Merong iba may 22,000, iba may 18,000. But I think the government must be strict that once you pass the nursing profession, it is the duty of the government na dapat lahat ng pumasa sa nurse, kung gusto nila mag-course, dapat Lahat ng nurse, ang laki-laki ng budget na binibigay, halos 500 billion ang binibigay sa local governments. Dapat ang mga nurses natin makapasok sa lahat ng ospital, lahat ng primary health care, lahat ng mga centers, dapat may nurse, at ang sweldo dapat, yung karapat dapat na 22,000 or 25,000. Huwag na kayo bumalagpak, ipaglalaban na lang natin yan, and I will need you to lobby. The noisy wheel gets the oil. Ba't kayo papayag na yung pulis at saka mga sundalo, 29,000 ang starting salary. Ang nurse is precious. Yan ang kumakalinga sa primary health care, kayong mga operating room nurse, napakahalaga ng ginagawa nyo, mga, yung mga uh, nurse na magagamit yan. Sa Red Cross lang, ang mga nurses namin talagang they are well-rounded. Uh, the head of our water department, yung nagbigay ng tubig sa lahat ng hospital, lumagkaroon ng shortage dito sa Manila about two months ago, ay Philippine Red Cross. Ang head niyan ay isang nurse at siya ay magiging director na ng Red Cross. Nurse siya. Ang SG ko ng araw ay nurse. Ngayon, yung nurse na yon, si Gwen Pang, nasa head siya ng buong North Asia, including China, Korea, North Korea, Mongolia, and tinatawag uh, natin uh, Japan. At makita nyo, because he became well-rounded, tinatanggap siya, at dapat babalik siya. Dapat, ngayon eh, nag extend pa siya. Pero sabi ko, hindi ka na pwede mag-extend. Para makakaabante lahat yung ibang mga nurses natin. And in the Red Cross, we have Red, Red, Red Cross, uh, Juan, makikita nyo. I just want to show you. I don't know if we can do it. Uh, are we connected? Uh, nakatulog na naman ata si Juan, yung isang nurse ko na nagpumamilit doon sa Juan, social media. Are we connected? Yes, we are. Okay, if you look at the uh, Juan, this is our operation center. Di ba pwede yung lakihan niya? Di ba malalakihan? Our operating center in the Red Cross, and I, I would advise you uh, Rajel, to take time out and go to the operation center, to go to the building, the new building of the Red Cross, or the dialysis center right next to the Manila Hotel here. And you can see we have nurses there and in the operation room nurse. Gusto ko, dyan sa operation center, hindi lang weather ng buong Pilipinas, 
First thing I will tell you is we are a disaster-prone country. Akala ko pinraktis na yan. And in a disaster-prone country, uh, aim high na naman ako nito. Eh. Uh, in a disaster-prone country, you have volcanoes, earthquakes. On July 15, uh, I was in Nueva Ecija in the year 1991 for that big earthquake, that big earthquake in Luzon. And I remember, uh, okay. I remember na kinuha namin yung mga nasaktan doon and one day I was, uh, 20 years later, I was in my way. See, a young lady was lumiligit-ligit sa akin, sinabi ng teacher, meron kayong survivor dito. And it turned out she was one of the people I pulled out in Kabanatuan, underneath the rubble. Marami na matay doon, pero we were able to pull her out. And sabi niya, niyakap niya ako, sabi niya, she's a teacher already. And I was very, very proud of her. Yeah. In our operation center, makikita niyo, na, it's okay, don't worry about it. Uh, sa operation center, ayan, uh, the uh, weather is there, and I can show you how we use uh, the Red Cross. We have, uh, slogan called volunteers plus logistics plus information technology equals a Red Cross that is always first, always ready, always there. Now you can see we have about 2 million volunteers in the Red Cross. And I can tell you when you go there, you will see the mga red spots na yan, yan ang mga volunteers namin who will tell us their act as our eyes and ears. Alright? As I mean, ito, nagibay mga bahay dito, bahar na kami. Uh, yung hospital namin, bahana kong nurse And here, we also have the green dots which represent first aiders. Yan, yung green. Makita nyo doon sa kanan, yun ang mga 143 namin. Merong health, may safety, may first aider, may blood. Merong mag magdadala ng social welfare services pag magbibigay kami ng relief o maghahanap kami ng tao na tetrace sila. And therefore, uh, dito, yan yung mga first aiders. Every year, we train about 120,000 first aiders and they become part of the Red Cross. So, kung tamaan tayo ng the big one, if you look on the right side, lahat siya may pangalan, may address, may telepono, lahat yung volunteer na yan. Whether they're doctors, nurses, or volunteers. If I go to the doctors, makikita nyo, doctors, please, lalabas yung mga doktor dyan, where they are, if I ask for the hospitals, lalabas yan, and lalabas rin kung mga nurses, kung naandyan na kayo, meron na kami mga nurses dyan, dapat naandyan lahat ang operating room nurse. Because when there is a mass casualty event, nabawa, nagkaroon ng big one, no? Uh, lahat ma-occupy, yung mga nurses dyan, yung mga doktor busy, may mamamatay na doktor, kukulangin ng nurses, so pag kukulangin ng operating room nurse, sa mga anesthesia nurses, Alam namin kung nasa naroon kayo, we have 102 chapters in the entire country. We have 153 ambulances. Soon they will be 163 ambulances. And we can pick you up and say, punta ka dito at kulang kami ng nurses dyan. You can also tell us, kulang kami ng dugo if you're an operating room nurse. You can text us and say, kulang na kami ng dugo dito. Of course, we will have a volunteer there. Pero walang harm na kung naando kayo, at marami dumarating na pasyente ay dapat at tayo ay nakanda na tumawag ka agad at sabihin, ito ang kailangan ng hospital. We're running out of blood. We're running out of bandages. Uh, we're running out of oxygen tanks. And the Red Cross will try and get it for you. In other words, babalikan ko mamaya yung sinabi ko sa nurse. Kung hinahandle namin sa Red Cross ang disasters because we are a country of tremendous disasters, was in the middle of the volcano. I can show you. If you're a member of the Red Cross Nursing Corps, you'll find yourself, for example, in Marawi, where we had the battle in Marawi. And from day one, makikita nyo dyan sa video, sinasalubong na ng mga Red Cross yung mga tao na galing sa uh, bakbakan. And later on, we would provide them with medical tents, we provide kami ng water, we provide kami yung mga toilets. Ayan, may mga toilet. Lahat siya, Red Cross, pang babae, pang lalaki. Pati showers na andyan. And our nurses, you can see on the other side, uh, they are taking care of the sick. And 
Yung marami nanganganak and we have a lot of tents there. And for that matter, in in uh, Leyte, ang daming mga nanganak do sa mga medical tent namin where we have a surgical tent. We have surgery. Ayan yung basic healthcare namin. Ayan yung mga napapatingin. So, may mga nanga nurse yan, mga Muslim nurses yung naandyan sa Lanao na Red Cross. So, what I'm saying is you find a role and this is the challenge I raised, the first challenge I raised, is find a role for the operating room nurse to be able to connect to us. For example, nung sinugod ng ISIS yung amay pakpak, ang kausap ko doon, isang nurse at saka yung head ng hospital, nandito sila sa labas namin, pumasok ng mga gunmen, and they were giving me a blow-by-blow -blow account of what was happening. Sinasaktan ba kayo? Hindi ho. May nakabulag taho dito, patay. May, pinaksak, may pinasok ko dito, may tama. And they were addressing it. And right away, we had already sent blood by that time, so kompleto tayo. So maybe one of the roles that I'd like to ask you is to form a partnership right away, just as the Philippine Medical Association and all the surgical associations, they have partnerships with us, and their doctors are, you know, are schooled in the fact that we could ask them to help us when there is a need. Also, when there is a mass casualty event or a big disaster abroad, like Nepal, my earthquake, we sent 29 people from the Red Cross, and they all helped out, nurses and doctors. And most of the time, we will pick them up in the provinces, so they were able to go to Nepal, napapalit palit sila, or Bangladesh, we have them there, or in Myanmar, or even in the Ebola crisis, we sent people during the Ebola crisis. So the long and the short of it is, I ask you today, what is your role? Your role is not just to be the best nurses, but as your, uh, you know, your uh, uh, mission statement says, develop, cultivate the highest professional standard in perioperative nursing through education and research activities. That's one. The second one is collaborate. And I repeat, collaborate with healthcare partners like the Red Cross and other associations for development and training, especially in a country where there's a lot of disasters, the nurses, operating room nurses, as well as the regular nurses can be all part of this experiment that we are doing. So that would be, I suppose, the first task. And for that, uh, if the board of directors of this organization and all of you would agree, uh, you know, in fact, one of the projects that I'm now doing is tying up with the Chinese Medical Center. They have student nurses there, and one of their trabaho will be to ride our ambulances because we want our ambulances to be manned by trained professionals, and they will be there for six months. And eventually, we're going to introduce a course on paramedic training, which is a higher one, which means the options of our people are even wider, not just for nurses, they can be paramedics in other countries. So that is something that I'd like you guys to think about. Having said that, go back to the nursing profession in this country, the woeful scenario in this country. Ang ating mga nurses ay talagang na-exploit. Uh, I fired, for example, the director of Olongo Po City General Hospital. Nung siya nag-oopera, kinakalabit niya yung nurse, sabi niya, mamaya makikita tayo ng alas stress dito sa hotel na ito. Nagsumbong sa akin, pinakita yung note, tanggal siya. In other words, uh, there has got to be respect for the nurses. Dapat talaga, everything must be done to make sure that you are not an entitled person, respect, but you earn the respect of everyone by being the professionals that you truly are. And having said that, uh, when you start looking at the economics of nursing, graduate tapos ang sweldo, I already posited one solution. And one of the things I'll be looking at in this coming session is to try and come up with a bill and I'll work with uh, Senator Go, who has just been elected, Bongo, who's taking over health. And I will tell him, ito ang gagawin natin sa mga nurses para may plano tayo at para sa ganoon tama ang mga sweldo. The government must not be silly saying, nagpapanurse tayo para ipadala abroad lamang. 
If they're going to go abroad, they should be able to be trained when they graduate in the rural areas, in the barangay health centers, in the hospitals in the provinces, and as, as all kinds of things. And then after that, then they can go. And dapat every nurse that graduates should not be made to volunteer. He should be allowed, or he or she should be allowed to start working. Is it a long shot? I don't think so. It's not a long shot because there's enough money in the era. There's always money in government. Kaya lang hindi na ilalagay yung pera sa tamang lugar. So at least we can start by doing something like that and making sure that when a nurse graduates, she must be able to work in the government. For example, ako may ginawa akong hospital, hindi na siguro may papakita, I don't know na connection dyan, maliit sa Dolores. We did that with the United Arab Emirates and it's a functioning, it's an X-ray, there's an X-ray, there is a blood blood system, there is a ultrasound, and we have to put doctors and nurses there. It's one of the poor areas of the country. And therefore, kung naandyan kayo, at least we should be able to pay you, and uh, kinakabit namin sa PhilHealth para sa ganon, we can pay uh, the necessary salaries. But it's important for you to know now the Red Cross also makes sure that we are a good employer, we try to provide good pay for our nurses and they have a career. Uh, the entry level is 18, but in six months they go up to 21,000 and they can go up to 24 to 30,000, even become secretary general or director of the organization. So we have to practice what we preach. Having said that, it's time that we look at what is the future for us all. My gosh, the, the government says, guard kayo nurse, tapos hindi kayo papansinin, bahala na kayo sa buhay nyo, bahala na kayo makakuha ng trabaho. Some of the best people, and that's why I mean it when I say I honor the nursing profession. When I was uh, a broadcaster in Channel 5, in between my Senate job, nung nagkagulo sa Libya, ang kausap ko doon live, were operating room nurses, operating in the Libyan hospital in Tripoli, etc. And they did not want to leave. Kaya tumaas ang respeto ko. Sabi ko, baka pera lang hinahabol nyo. Mababawi naman nyo yan. Tatanggapin kayo kahit na saan. They could not leave their patients. They could not leave their doctors because pag wala, wala mangyayari doon sa nasaktan. Kaya palakpakan nyo yung ating mga nurses na heroes. Tama yung sinabi ni Florence Nightingale that the, the dear heroes are those who take up the daily grind. That's just a daily grind. They become extraordinary nurses because they want to. If you want to be extraordinary, it doesn't happen. You have to have drive. You have to have energy, ambition, passion, compassion. You have to be caring, compassionate, competent, competitive. Yan ang kailangan ninyo as a nurse. And at all times, you're a pro. You learn the latest things. That is what you're doing here. Hopefully, you learn new things. And so that makes sure that you hone your skills. But the best way to do it is talagang you cannot do that unless there is some effort to try and go outside your shell. See, I'm a senator, right? But all my life, even as mayor, even as secretary of tourism, I had an extra job that I am not paid for. And if I were to be paid, kulang siguro yung binabayad na isang million o dalawang million o tatlong million. Because we have made the Red Cross extraordinary because the volunteers gave us the kind of impetus so that when I go to any donor, I can ask for 25 million each to get a ship. And they did give us a ship. All my, all my ambulances are provided for us. Binibigay sa amin na mga kaibigan ko, na mga nasa banks, mga kaibigan natin, Mga I use my entire network. I am not paid a single centavo there. But I work there. Ngayon bakasyon, I'm always there every day. When I go to the office in the Senate, I leave at night. When there is an emergency, I'll be at the Red Cross in the morning, in the evening. The rest of the day, I'll be in the Senate, but I can go back there anyway. But the point is, you see, that the Red Cross functions very, very well. That day, we go to an area where we're not there, like, hey, Hemodialysis, we're there. If you should, if you have time to visit, you can go, you can walk to the Red Cross and you can see, there it is. 
when we open it up right there and you can see that medyo kompleto yan at uh, makita nyo uh, yan sa hemodialysis ngayon umaander na yan and we're going to add 5 more machines para maging 15 na yan 10 yan ngayon all of them are free so we have to raise more money right away I have raised money para yung hindi makakabayad after the 90 uh, treatments and they need 156 uh, I'm getting friends to provide for the balance but only one shot they have to raise their money afterwards because that's what we want to do lend a hand so to make a long story short there's plenty of room for improvement in the nursing profession you all have to make sure and I asked Rajel Kalina kung papayag siya sabi niya yes si Gab papayag raw kailangan maini, manaig kay Gab yung selfishness at maging parang angel Rajel angel kayong lahat nasasali kayo that you have something extra for the community so if I can do it you do can do it all you have to do is sign contribute something uh, in kind in money but you can also be a volunteer in times of mass casualty events let me tell you one thing about the Red Cross in 1917 there was a pandemic called the great influenza that can come back and bite us all over again I am very sensitive to breakouts. You measles, the Red Cross mobilized our nurses and we inoculated throughout the country about 16,000. Tinulungan namin ang ating hospital, ang ating mga doktor ng DOH. Let me tell you something without creating criticism. Over the years, napabayaan na ang health system natin. Ang guardia ng ating health is Department of Health. They are the sentinels. Pero kung dadaanin sa kalukuhan, katulad ng nakaraan, nag-procure ng gamot na hindi naman kailangan, hindi pa natetest yung deng box siya, ang lakalaking nawala at nagkakaroon ng duduhan tuloy. Kung makikita natin, nagkaroon tayo ng measles epidemic or do you know that at the end of the session last March, Nagpunta ka agad ako sa San Lazaro because I heard there is a measles uh, pandemic, uh, a breakout. And together with Dr. Susie Mercado, I went there and I found out they were overloaded. There were people, three to a bed, nagahawahan. That is why we put up right away in seven hospitals, tents with beds, with toilets. And by the way, they were all air conditioned para nakahiwalay yung measles stand. Ayan, nakalagay yan sa PGH. Ayan. They're all air-conditioned. I'm not asking for applause. But all I'm saying is, if you're gonna do a job, do it well. Do it extraordinarily well. Hindi yung ordinary. Pwede na yan. Tumutulong na ako eh. De, dapat, you must be the best at all times. And so, there's plenty of room for our collaboration here. There's plenty of room for the future. For example, one of the suggestions I'd like to make to you and I'm saying this with Chinese medical or Chinese general, eh dapat magturo tayo ng Nihongo because habang tinetrain natin yung mga 160,000 nurses natin, kung natuto yung iba dyan ng Nihongo, the population of Japan is getting very, very old. Almost 35,000 of the Japanese are old, over uh, 65 and over. Remember that? 65 and over ang population ng Japan. Lahat sila tumatanda, inverted pyramid. Ang vortex ng pyramid, nasa ilalim, ang population nila nasa taas matatanda. They will need nurses. Kasabihin lang yung caregiver. Caregiver, dahil hindi pa malalang magaling ng maghapon. Pero dapat, we should learn to speak Japanese. Mas malapit pa tayo. And at the same time, we can get a uh, and natawag natin ang training natin on the latest by exposure and yung mga tao pupunta dyan ang mga nurses must learn also the culture of the Japanese it's not enough to learn the Japanese you must learn also their culture in the same manner the Germans have 200,000 vacancies in their nursing requirements 200,000 in fact one of my uh, staff 
in my Senate office is studying right now in Potsdam, Germany. And she's giving me tips about what the Germans need. So para lumaki tayo, kailangan palakasin natin ang ekonomiya natin. And habang hindi pa lumalakas ang ating ekonomiya, kayong mga may skills na ganyan, you can really help because the savior of our economy is really the overseas Filipino workers and the BPOs. And hopefully later on tourism. So directly, so I'm trying to tell you is, yung ginagawa ninyo bilang operating room nurses, and I can tell you a story about that. When I became mayor of Longo po, I was invited to San Diego. Nagkakagulo yung mga kababayan ko doon. Dito ka matulog. Natulog ako doon sa isang uh, senior chief ng Navy. Nakapor siya dahil yung kanyang asawa ay operating room nurse sa San Diego. And I can tell you, it's not the lure of money that should get you there. But the fact is, you can go to Japan, get a very good salary. You can go to Germany, get a very good salary. Or not. Ang, ang, wo, ang woeful lang sa akin ay hindi na bumabalik yung mga pinapadala natin abroad. That is very sad. Ang kaibahan sa inyo, sabi ng isang Koreano na sumulat, the Philippines, Filipinos do not love their country. Kami, we will contribute kung may disaster, kung tumingi yung aming leader, sinasabi sa amin kami magaling na tao, dapat tayo ganun. Korea was ravaged by the war. Nagpadala tayo ng tao dyan. Ang Taiwan nung araw, nagkaka- the galiti sila makapunta rito. Ang Singapore napakaliit, tao na pa tayo dyan. And yet, talon-talo tayo. Why? Because we are a country that looks at our own navel. Nakitingin tayo sa pusod, hindi natin tinitingnan yung buong mundo, hindi natin tinitingnan yung pangangailangan ng ating bansa, at wala tayong commitment sa ating bayan. Before you can be a truly good nurse, Operating room nurse, dapat kayo ay Filipino first. At dapat kayo ay gagawa ng lahat ng pagkakataon para ma-enhance. So, in closing, your role, you must define. Kung ikaw ay waiter, dapat pinakamagiling kang waiter at pag nagsasalita, tahimik ka. Kung ikaw ay waiter, dapat magaling kang magsilbi. You are the best. Kung ikaw ay kusinero, you are the best. Yan ang palagay niyo sa inyo sarili, you must be the best nurse and the best doctor or the best Filipinos ever. And if we do that in unison, you can also select the best leaders in this country that is most suited for the problems of our country. Remember, sabi kanina, we are now 105 million Filipinos. Everywhere you go, we're bursting from the seams. Traffic in Cagayan de Oro, traffic in Cebu, traffic in Olongapo, traffic in Manila, garbage ever, hospitals overcrowded, nasa pasilyo na. And if we don't wake up to that reality, if we don't start acting as one country, we're never going to be able to get what needs to be done for a future for everyone. So I thought I'd like to talk to you today on the matter of your role in the development of our country and your development as a professional uh, organization, it is important that you realize that all of you were born for greater things. You cannot take your wealth. The allure of wealth is not that alluring for me. Iba, nagpapakamatay, umaman. Pag namatay ka, nobody remembers. Your money is left behind. Pagawain pa ng mga anak mo yan. Pero pag ikaw, ang tinayo mo ay yung ugaling maganda at yung talaga nakatulong ka, naka-uplift ka ng tao, that is your best legacy. And you don't need a legacy because when you help other people, you are always defining yourself. You have a heuristic notion to make sure that you will always be a good person. And once you have that, certainly, ang bayan natin will be enriched by it. So today, I forgive you of all your sins. Kung kayo'y swapang, kung kayo'y niisip nyo lang sarili nyo, kung kayo'y umaangal palagi, Ako ay naging may teacher akong pare, ang pangalan niya si Father Gordon. I bless you today. Ego te absolvo. Apicatis tu is in omni patria et filia del Espiritu Santo. <laughs> because if you do not remember that, wala, tuloy-tuloy tayo. Sabi nga ng Koreano, kayo simba kayo na simba, you're a Catholic country, pero bulok pa rin ang bayan nyo because you are selfish. 
the world, sabi nga ni Gandhi, man is at the center of a circle. The nurse is at the center of a, circu of a circle. The circumference of which is self-imposed. Aim high. Hindi mainit ang ulo. Aim high and make our country and your profession and yourself the best of the best. Thank you very much and have a great time.